the Navara. It's a legendary pickup truck from the Nissan stable that you can get today. A lot, and I do mean a lot of people love their rigs. And with good reason, because, well, they're plenty fast enough, they're comfortable, and it's got good looks to boot. But why is it that so many people find this rig so special? To find out, we brought not one, but two of them up here for our review today. This media unit is a Pro 4X, while this is actually owned by someone. This one is a VE Caliber. We met him outside of a showroom, invited him up here, and he was game. This thing's so new, it's still got sponges on the door. This is the most expensive, while this is the most affordable automatics in the entire range of the Nissan Navaras. Capable of conquering almost any frontier? <laughs> Hood, both Navaras are powered by a 2.5 liter turbo diesel that produces 187 horses and 430 newton meters of torque, mated to a seven speed automatic transmission. Now, this Pro 4X is a 4x4, while the VE is a 4x2. Fuel efficiency wise is where the VE does a little bit better. On the highway, the Pro 4X does about 18, while the VE does 20. Now, in the city, in major traffic, the Pro 4X gets about 7, while the VE does about 8 to 8.2. One look and you know you're in for something special, as the facelifted Navara looks pretty darn good, even in the lower trim levels. Starting with the Pro 4X, it's got a black grille with a red accent Nissan logo, multi-projector LED headlights, and fog lamps. On the VE, to our surprise, it also gets LED headlights, the same one as the top of the line. The fog lamps, same as the top of the line too, which makes for great value. And the grille itself is finished slightly different, but with chrome to go along with it. The side profile is as utilitarian as ever, but it's nice and clean. The fenders on the Pro 4X have a small red accent that is similar to the Nissan grille, unfortunately, I'm not really the biggest fan of. It's got disc brakes up front and drum at the rear, and both models get 220 millimeters of ground clearance. Where it differs is with its wheels and tires. They both have 17 inches, and they both are on 65 series, but the VE gets uh, a more road-going set while the Pro 4X gets a more rugged and off-road set with all-terrain tires. I will say this about both of these trucks. If you're not really into the bling of it all, or if you're not too particular about the rugged looks, then there's no excuse to not buy a Navara because there's also the VE and VL variants. Autodeal.com.ph can connect you to get the best quote from multiple dealerships near you you can request and compare quotes from any dealership in the Philippines. Get the best deal with AutoDeal. The Navara has a payload capacity of 1,100 kilograms, which is plenty impressive considering that it's on coil springs. Impressive too is the assisted tailgate, not just on the Pro 4X, but on the VE caliber as well. What isn't so impressive is that neither of them, not even the top of the line, has a bed liner, which we kind of hope would be a dealer option, I guess. You do get tether points for strapping down your cargo, which makes the bed a little bit more versatile. And as for the overall space, you get 1,258 liters of capacity. I know these things are tethers, man, but I have no idea how they work. Oh my God, I broke the truck. You could just screw it back in, man. Forget that, man. Run. You still get a bench at the rear, nothing's changed, but it doesn't look nor feel like a bench thanks to some clever stitching that's found on the seats. And plus, you've got amenities here in the back, like air vents, a charging point, and of course, a center armrest with two cup holders. Headroom is actually okay. It's the legroom that could use a little bit of help if you have a tall driver. Shorter driver, sure, but this, this is Jack's normal driving position and he's about six feet tall, north of 200 pounds. So he takes up a lot of space. Better really if there was a shorter driver in front of me for more legroom. But honestly, even if you're in the back at long drives, like I've said before, I was here in the back for 400 kilometers and it's not bad at all. It's pretty comfortable considering that this is still a bench, no matter how you look at it. Now, with the exterior being what it is, you'd expect the interior to be a little bit incredible. Unfortunately, it isn't that overly amazing, but we are not saying that it isn't built for purpose. 
The Navara manages to impress us a little bit with its steering wheel. Look at it, touch it, hold it, and admire the ergonomics of it and how it fits nicely in your hands. Sources even say that it's the same steering wheel that we see in the Nissan 400Z, though I'm not really sure where that came from. Anyway, it's a great steering wheel, but we really only wish that it came with a redesigned interior. Ah oh well. The seats are firm, but not too tough, and supple enough, but not too hard on your bum. Oh, and speaking of being hard on your bum, zero gravity seats, everyone. When you drive a Navara, you can bid farewell to rides that are too bumpy, because these suckers will keep your ass in check. Also, consider that this is a feature that only comes with high-end vehicles and not your average pickup truck. To top it all off, zero gravity seats are standard throughout the range. The VE does get the same steering wheel, but it loses out on the leather. Again, you do get the zero gravity seats, like I said, but if you didn't know that, you couldn't really tell the difference at a glance. Both variants get an 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system that comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The gauge cluster, even in the mid-tier variant, has a 7-inch display in the middle flanked by two analog gauges. The tech in this thing looks great, but wait, ha, there's more. On top of everything that we've already mentioned, the Pro 4X still gets an around view monitor, but on top of that still is the off-road monitor. Now though, only higher trims will get this feature and it gets four parking sensors to boot. Now for those of us who cannot afford such luxuries at the very least, Nissan was kind enough to equip everything except the base model with a reverse camera. And get this, Nissan is so generous that it's equipped every model apart from the base with intelligent forward collision warning, driver attention alert, and hill start assist. Now the only thing that the upper variants get are blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning, high beam assist, hill descent control, and the around view monitor. Everything else is standard apart from the base model, and that's what we love to see. There is just one little thing, and I do mean one little thing. It's when you turn the steering wheel, there's a little bit of a hole on the steering column. It's not a deal breaker, and it's probably just my obsessive compulsiveness getting over me, but it just feels like, well, it's a little unfinished. But again, like I said, it's not a deal breaker. It's just, cover it, see it, cover it, see it. Artemo? Do it, look at it, it stares you in the face like a pimple. Nissan didn't skip on the safety features in any variant because you get driver, front passenger, side, and curtain airbags even on the base model. ABS with EBD with brake assist, four-wheel active brake limited slip, trailer stability, speed sensing door locks, and engine immobilizer and alarm, and of course, ISOFIX tether. There are a lot of people out there that will get into a pickup truck and say, yeah, this car's kind of bouncy. And then the owner of the pickup truck will actually look at that person and say, no Sherlock. But to those that know, those that own a rig, if you were to compare those rigs to this, how can I put it? Hmm, I got it. Okay, on Edsa, no less, it's like a cat. And mind you, I'm a dog person. I really don't like cats, but it's like a cat that's going through a laser field with its eyes focused on a tin of cat food at the other end. And it's passing through all of this rubble. It's not bothered at all. Its sight is straight and everything underneath is doing all the work. And that's exactly what this thing is like. Everything under the car is doing all the work because it's such a smooth ride. And then you're thinking it might be the fuel load. Well, because yeah, it carries 80 liters of fuel, but really that's only about 150 pounds. It's the coil springs. It's got to be the coil springs. It's just really different. Now, I don't want to use the words night and day difference, but damn, it's close. Take note, however, I'm saying this in the context of pickup trucks. I mean, this isn't a Land Rover or a Range Rover or even a Mars Rover or a Rover Red Rover. What is a Rover Jack? The brunt of the torque kicks in at a low level, and when you're in a rush, it seems the Navara understands because the transmission dispenses with the lower gears as soon as it can, as smoothly as it can. 
if there's anything else to nitpick on, it'll probably be the seat. Not the fact that there's zero gravity. No, it's that, that it's manual. It's not power. While almost everybody in this segment is power. Yes, granted, the market leading Hilux is not power. It's actually more plain and there's no leather in there, but it's not trying to be posh. This guy is. So if there's anything that you actually just want to pick on, yeah, it would be the fact that sadly, it would have been nicer if this had power seats. I'm not complaining, I'm just saying if you wanted to nitpick, you know what I mean? Legend has it that you no longer need to enter a dealership to buy yourself a brand new car. Product placement aside, these two guys are legends themselves. Whether you get yourself the entry-level automatic, which comes in at 1,459,000 Philippine pesos, or the Pro 4X, the top of the line ass kicker, that comes in at 1,849,000 Philippine pesos. Regardless of which one you'll get, you'll notice and you'll find out that the accolades that they get are no myth. Mars? Tara, 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 tara. Huwag ka susunot ng red, ha? baka makamuflage ka, you won't be seen. Who is it, Robin Williams? This whole...